So I guess I think we can can we all can we start? I don't know. Yep. Is that Zainab? Is Zainab are you here? Uh, I don't know if it is sign up. Hello. I don't know who is joining with home PC if it is sign up. I don't know. I don't know either. Hello, please can you introduce your services sign up or Maybe the person is muted. So I think uh, let's just start because of that. Okay, so today we'll be going through uh, chapter 20 of the book, uh, which is about uh, internals of ggplot2. Uh, I think before this chapter, or for the previous chapter in which uh, we have been looking at, we have been looking at uh, ggplot2 plot in the as the user of the package, mainly as a user of the package. But what about if we want to become also a developer of uh, ggplot2, we want to know the back end of ggplot2, how ggplot2 is really picking this uh, code in which we are giving it, how it's translating it into the final output. That is where we need to look at. We need to really go in depth and, uh, uh, look at the internals of ggplot2. So for the learning objective, uh, which we'll be looking at uh, today, we we'll look at what is it. We will look at what is the difference between user-facing code and also internal code uh, in ggplot2. Because the internal code will use the internals to what troubleshoots to see how what is going on at the back end. Uh, we we'll also look at what is the distinction between uh, ggplot underscore build and ggplot underscore g table will try to see how we can differentiate between these two uh, uh, objects uh, in ggplot2. Uh, we're also going to look at what is the division of labor between uh, ggplot2 and also the grid package in R. So I think the lastly, we'll look at uh, uh, what is the basic structure of motivation of uh, ggplot2. So like, in, in case we want to create an extension of uh, a ggplot2, so we need to really understand uh, ggplot2, which is another part of what object-oriented uh, programming uh, in R. So I think we'll see much more, more of this in the last two uh, chapters of the book, because everything about uh, ggplot, uh, it was designed using this uh, ggplot2 object-oriented uh, uh, programming approach. So first of all, we load, we need to load the library ggplot2. We also, I uh, think uh, I will not be going uh, in depth about the ggtrace, but I will introduce, I will share, put a link to a blog post in which uh, the the author of the package, Junjo, I think he wrote a very good, a very good- uh, Like 30 minutes. Oh, yep. sorry. Okay. So I think June, he wrote a very, uh, uh, he is the author of this, this great package. I think he wrote a good blog post. I think he did a presentation in use R. I think I'll share the link to that before the end of the, my talk. So I think Paul for functional programming and Dipla for basically uh, used for data wrangling. Okay, so I think for the introduction part, uh, they talk about uh, as a user mainly, uh, what we are doing with ggplot2, we are mainly using it uh, uh, as a user to just create our plot, create our visualization, in which we can use in, in our presentation or in our publication. So, but uh, that basically, if we are always doing this, mainly we are, we fall into this uh, part of the user, we are always facing code. But what about uh, if you want to go in depth, to look at the internal code, that is when uh, we need to think about how to troubleshoot each layer, what is happening within each layer uh, in ggplot2. So uh, first of all, uh, looking at the first uh, case study in which we'll be looking at, uh, we can change the order of some layers 
Okay, so we have a default plot here, which is defined here. We have ggplot, so we are using empty cars data. So we did our our aesthetic mapping here. So we are we are placing uh, the x-axis, which is mpg. We want to log transform, place it on a log 10 scale, then zoom, which is gonna be point. Then we add some zoom smooth in this uh, layer. So so we can also do uh, this uh, still the same plots uh, without the middle uh, scale middle. So once we do this, we are going to end up uh, with this. So we are going to end up with this, but what is actually the back end, what is actually going on at the back end, we don't know what is going on because we are mainly a user of the package. We are only using it to just create our visualization, but we don't, but we don't know what is actually going on at the back end of our package. We don't know what is going on. We are only using it at this point. We are only using it uh, to create our visualization. So uh, the idea of the ggplot2 internal only comes in. Is, it only comes in if we want to know what is going on at the back end of ggplot2. How is ggplot2 taking uh, the input in which we are giving it? How is it taking our code? How is it translating it? How are all this, uh, all this mapping? How are they done at the back end of ggplot2? So that is when, uh, that is where uh, the internals come in. So I think uh, the first part, uh, uh, the first part in which we are going to look at in this uh, plot method, we are going to consider. We are going to consider uh, this plot. We are going to consider this plot. So I can pick this plot and share my house studio. Read a new script. I can pick this plot. Library. Diverse. Short. Grab the plot. So when I call this plot, when I call the plot, is going to display. It's going to display that plot for me. We can look at the class. I can look at the class of the plot. That we can see that the class is a GG, and is also a GG plot too. I can look at the attributes. I can inspect the element of attributes of P. We can see that the attribute it has what it has names, and within the names we have data. We have the layers, we have the scales, we have the mapping, we have the team, we have the coordinate, we have the facet, plot environment, and label, and the class is also a GG. So we can also check for the names of this object of P. Okay, these are all the names. So the first part of it is that, uh, the first part of this, what is, going on in the back end is that once we have done all these steps, so this ggplot underscore build, this ggplot underscore build function, this function, what is going to take is that once you receive this our plot object, which is P that I have defined, once this ggplot underscore build receive this our plot object, is going to convert this plot object into it's going to convert this plot object into what? Into, it's going to go through all the layers we have in ggplot2. It's going to extract all the data and it's going to convert this data into a standard format that will make, be made available to for the next layer of the plotting. So this is, let's say, this is a uh, gg belt, okay? P underscore GG belt. So, so this is P underscore. So I can call P underscore GG belt. We can see that we have this. We can look at the class of that object. You can see that the class of this object is GG belt. So this GG belt is what is doing is that it's going to go through the, all the layer we have specified in the plot above. It's going to go to all these layers to look at where we specify data. 
Here we are always specify data are just the first layer. So the second layer are just some uh, geometric object in which we pass and some fill. And also the this is like the lab. So it's going to extract all those data. Then what it's going to do is that it's going to transform those data sets because this is happening in the back end. We'll not see all this is happening in the back end. It's going to transform all those data sets into a standard uh, format that will be made available uh, for that will be made available for plotting. We can also inspect layer underscore data, which is also a wrapper plot, which is P. I can just say index is one L. Okay, this is also going to return. Is also going to return the data frame back. Okay, we can see that here. This is the color. This is the what we are mapping to the x-axis. These are the values we are using for plotting. This is what we are mapping to the y-axis. These are the panels. So here we have just two panels, 1999 panel one, 2008 will be panel two. Then these are the groups. Okay, these are the groups, which we have two groups. These are the shape. These are the size. This is a fill aesthetic. In this case, there is no fill aesthetics. We did not apply alpha. So that is why we're having NA field also we're having NA. Then what do we have? Okay. So the stroke is uh 0 0.5. Maybe I'll pause here for a question before we proceed. I just wonder what the IL means. Do you know and how many other um yeah, so for you to know it's like the index, the index or the layer we want to make reference to if we look at the documentation layer underscore data it's like for the index in which we want to make reference to you can see that i an integer in layer data the data returns in order ordered of the plot so it's like the index which we make we used to make reference to the layer in which we want to return so if you put in 2l what happens if we put in 2l it might give us an error because Okay, 2L returns because here, yeah, looking at here, yeah, this object, let's see. Looking at this object, how many groups do we have? Yeah, that's what, that was kind of my question. Yep, it returns the same, but if we put 3L, it would throw an error because we have subscripts out of bound because we only have two layers in this output, in the layer on that. And, and the first layer account. and the second layer are the same, you say? Is that right? You said? The first layer and the second layer are the same. Is that what you said? Can I see first... 1L and 2L are the same thing? No, it's not. Go, go down. That looks like it's 2L, right? Go down. Yep. This is the first layer. Right. And that the last column is alpha. And so what's the last column in the second layer? The last column. Yeah, it's alpha. Let's see the second layer. Or you could just hit call names. Anyway, go up. Because that the last column for alpha was it's, this it's is alpha. point four. So it is alpha. So yes. So what does it look it? like? Can we look at the plot? I just want to see P again. Yep. Let's see P. Yep, this is it. But there's no alpha values in any of those. Yeah, there is no alpha. There is no alpha. So then how come this has alpha? Oh, the gray. The gray yeah. has some alpha because it's the confidence interval. So that does it automatically. Yes, it's yes, alpha. yes, yes, so yes. The second yes, layer, yes. the second layer is the confidence intervals. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So okay, so let's go back. Yeah. So we have seen how to use class, okay? We can also look at type of on that same object. We can see that the object is a list. It's a list because it contains several items here. Okay, we have printed P. Okay, so there is still also another method in ggplot2 in which we can use for printing of our plot. We can say ggplot2, Okay, because it's always, it's an, since it is unexported, 
So we need to call it this way, print uh, ggplot. Then we pass in the object that we want to print, which is P. So once we run that, it's just going to print uh, it's just going to print our plot. This, but this function is is unexported. That is why I'm using three colon colon. So that is why I'm using this. I'm calling it up from the namespace. Is is unexported. So, but go back for the layer underscore data. I think we need to inspect what is doing. What is the layer underscore data doing? Is still making reference to this ggplot underscore build function, then it call the plot, then it assess the data, which is the first item in the list. So it's just going to grab the data and return the data for us. So that is what the layer underscore data is doing. We can also inspect the ggplot underscore build. The ggplot underscore build is just going to, is using the ggplot build function what this actually is doing is that it's just basically is grabbing our data in which we have mapped to our, our various uh, layers. It's make sure it's going to transform that data. So after it has transformed that data, it makes that data uh, to be uh, make available, ready for plotting. Then it's going to pass it to the next step, which we'll talk about later, which is uh, the G. G table, which we are using the G table package in R to uh to create a visual to convert that uh, data into a visual element. So I think I will not uh this one is just about benchmark to check for speed. So we have look at the prints using the plots dot plot function. So we have, which we can use to see what uh this is doing, which is a function. So what the print is doing is that it's using this guy, which is the ggplot2 underscore bill. We pass in, what we pass in, it's the data. Then we step to the next step, which we are grabbing the data from here. We pass this data. Then this is just using the grid package. Then at the end, what ggplot2 is going to do is invisible is going to return that up same object is going to return its doors invisibly, which is our plot. So, okay, so this is still the modification of that same code above, the print code above. Okay, so we just create a modification, make it to be simple and easy for us to read. So we have a function of that is taking one argument, which is X. So here we have data, ggplot underscore bill. We pass in our X. Then G table, which is our ggplot underscore G table, we pass in our data, which we are from this step. So we since we are we are moving from this step, this is the second step. Then the third step is simply using the grid package. This is going to initialize our plotting window. Then this is going to draw uh, the, our plot for us. Then it's going this return invisible X is going to re, automatically is going to return. Uh, that plot for us, uh, which let's see that. Let's see that. Let me see that. Okay, let's see that. In action. So this is the function. So I just print it. So we can see that ggprints three is just going to return. Uh, it's going to return my plots are for me a <laughs> okay so this was an example with the grid package so before i use do this example let me just copy this uh to my scripts again okay so we lose so grid, so what this is going to do is going to initialize our plotting window. This is going to initialize our plotting window, which is what the GG is doing for us by default. It's just basically is calling this function and this function is going to initialize our plotting window. So the P, which is our plot, 
Then we pipe it to ggplot underscore build. So what ggplot underscore build is going to do is that it's going to go through the various layers. It's going to grab the data, make sure this data is ready for plotting. Then once it has converted this data to uh to uh, ready, make it ready for plotting, then it's going to pass it to the next step, which is ggplot underscore g table. What this ggplot underscore g table is doing is that it's going to convert this data into an uh, image that will be made available to, to visualize it using the grid package. So once we run this, we can see that this is a grid. This is a table group, 13 by 15 layout, 22 group, panel, background. So we can now draw. This is what is now going to draw. Grid dot draw is now going to draw uh this output for us i think i can make a simpler example here when i was ex going through this script so we have our plots okay which is what we have got which is plot underscore belt so the next step for me to do uh, we have looked at the attribute of that is for me to use gg plot underscore g table on this plot underscore belt so when i do that i can look at the class of the G table, we can see that it's of object of G table. We have G tree, we have group, we have this object also. We can also look at the attributes. Attributes of P underscore G table. We can see this is the attribute of the object. So, so this object is what we can now say. Uh, we can now pass. We can now pass this to grid underscore draw, grid dot uh, draw, which is what is going to be underscore G table. This is the guy that will now draw. It will now draw our final graph in which we have. But all these things, uh, we will not have access to all these things when we are using ggplot2. These are all running at the back end. These are all running. At the back end. So when I went through the chapter, uh, I think uh, when I went through uh, the chapter, so that is where I was able to discover uh, at the back end of ggplot2. This is all what is going at the back end, but it's mainly useful for us in terms of us. If you want to become a developer, we want to really uh, troubleshoot a GB plot because, like now, this is plot underscore bell, we, we can also inspect that each of this element. Plot underscore belt, we can assess the data. Okay. We can assess the data with this format. We can also say plot underscore belt. We can go to the layout of this plot. We can see the layouts. These are we can these are all the layouts. So we can look at panel scale Y. Okay. We can use look at panel scale y. We can see for this plot I'm showing that the range for the y goes from 10.4, which is what we have here, to the maximum value of 44.4, which is what uh, we got here. So the limits is also do that like that. So we can say plot underscore belt, plot underscore belt. We can still go to layouts. So I can look for, say, let's see the facets, okay? Uh, let's see the draw panels. So we can look at the draw panels. These are, so all these, uh, all these, uh, they, are, they are mainly useful to, to us, uh, maybe when we want to uh, troubleshoot to see what is going on in this layer. Uh, what, how is ggplot2, how is it taking my data? How is it taking my data? to turn it into the visual element, what I can really uh, see. So they are very useful uh, for us to spend some time uh, to look at each of those uh, layers. I don't know if there are any questions before I proceed. So this one is like, is helping us to check the size of the objects in which we have created. Helping us to check the size of the objects is a function. 
Okay, so we can say P plus this, we can see that this P is just 31 kilobytes. This image we are seeing is of size 31 KB. So, but when we pipe it to our belt objects, we can see we have 101 KB kilobytes, uh, ggplot G table, ggplot belt P, and then object size, which is now two megabytes. Okay, so I don't know, I will just pause there. I don't know if there are any questions. I think, uh, hello, Zainab, Brian, I don't know if there are questions. I'm okay, thanks. I'm, I'm okay. okay, sorry for being late. Yeah, no problem. So now let's look at uh, the build step. Let's look at the build step. So what we are using is uh, the ggplot underscore builds, just as what I've explained already. So if you inspect the build steps, so we can inspect the build step with this uh, code. So you can see that it's a function that is taking our plots, okay? It's taking our plots. It's taking our plots, then it's going to, it's going to apply it's going to the code. So the, the code is basically leaks long. So this is just the layers, which is grabbing the plots, all the layers, because we want to have access to all the layers. Uh, want to have access to all the layers. So, so we can see that the build step at the end that the class is the is the ggplots. Uh, is a ggplot underscore belt. So we can say that as dot list body, ggplot2, ggplot underscore belt, ggplots, we can see that this is giving us the output, which is gonna come in as a list. It's gonna come as a list. So for the, but for the data preparation, because the build step, the main area idea of the build step is for it to go to the different layers in which we have specified our plot. It's going to prepare uh, the data ready for the plotting steps. So we have some demo here, data demo P. So we are also having job level. So what we call data demo P is going to give us this uh, plot that we are seeing here. So we can say data demo P we assess the layer, we can see that the layer returns uh, this class. So let's see uh, in our own example, P dollar sign layers. So when we assess the layers, you can see the layers that we have two layers. So just like uh, when I was doing this, when Gwen was interrupting, I think we can see that we have two layers in this plot. This is the first layer, which is index one. This is the second layer, uh, this is the second layer. This is the second layer. So since there is no third layer, so if I put, since there is no third layer, so if I put, sorry, it's not this. Since there is no third layer, so if I put three L here, it will return error because there is no third layer. We only have layer one and layer two. So. So we have returned the second layer. If I need the first layer, this uh, for the sec first layer. So we can also use ggplot2 layers, okay? We, are, we can also assess the layer underscore data. We can see that it's a ggplot2 object. It's, a, it's using ggplot2 method of object-oriented uh, programming. We can also, Assess it in this frame with passing the layers and then layer underscore data, data demo, and then also data. So we can see that this is our this is our actual data we pass in that we feed in uh, to ggplot2. This is our actual data, and you can see how we were able to get access uh, to the data uh, using this syntax. So we can I can check for this example. We can use this for this example. In this case here, we have P. Those are layers. 
So here we have P. So this is expected. This give us our, this is our default data set in which we use for plotting. We can use it to return our data set back. So we have P, we, we assess the layer. So we index the first layer and then we use dollar sign layer underscore data P and then we assess data. So this return the data frame back for us uh, that we use uh, for our plots. Oh, pop this returns for the second layer. Okay. So like now, this is where this, this is where our transformation step would take place. So we have body ggplot two underscore build dot ggplot in the five. So so we have some data. Repeat list not lens layer. So this uh this is the steps uh, that will apply all these transformations. So here uh they were using the digitrace trace package. So I did not have time uh to. Uh, I will not have time to really go in depth uh, to look at uh, this uh, ggtrace uh, package, but I can I can I can provide uh, the link to the websites for the article was uh, which I was looking at. I think they have a good example there, and also Jun Cho, he has he has a design. Uh, this excellent uh, blog post. He puts together this excellent uh, blog post that in which uh, he has some excellent uh, blog post. If you visit his uh, blog post, where the uh, the he really explain how this uh, is being implemented. Uh, so. For the data transformation, so this is mainly happening. Uh, this is mainly happening. This is mainly happening in the uh, layer ggplot two underscore builds. So we have the we have our belts object. So we are we are going to this ggplot underscore bell is just going to extract all the data in which we have in the different layer. Then it's going to what convert it into a variable that is ready for plotting. We can see that this is ready, uh, make ready for plotting. Then, if in, in case there are any uh, transformation in which we have applied into a uh, different uh, layer, so those transformation are going to be applied to the our data set before it's going to make uh, that data set ready for pass it to the next layer, which will be the geometry objects. So like in this example, we are just applying, placing the X scale on the log 10 scale. So we can see the default X here without, when we did not apply any transformation, we can see the default uh, values in which we are getting there. But when we apply, we place the X on the log 10 scale, this is, uh, this is uh, the final, this is the final output in which we are uh, going to get in our, so I want to look quickly scan through. We have look at G table. G table is what is going to prepare uh, this our data into a uh, into a image that will be ready for into a plot in uh, a size that will be ready for plotting in ggplot2. So which is the G table. Then the last step is just making using the. Uh, uh, passing this G table uh, using this grid uh, grid grid package in R that will be used to draw uh, the final plot because this is going to initialize our plotting window. So if I run this code in my console, you will discover that my plotting window will be initialized to just this gray. But in ggplot, if we run ggplot, this is what ggplot will be same thing. Ggplot two will give us. We can see where the idea came. So what is running in the background is this code that this guy is calling. So this grid dot grid draw PG table. So this is what is going to draw. Uh, it's going to draw uh, the plot for us. 
but in the in the book they also introduced make a, a they just gave us a snapshot of what we we are going to be uh expecting in the last two chapter which is chapter 20 extending uh ggplot2 because in order for us to be able to uh, have extend ggplot2 uh we need to understand this ggplot2 object because looking at ggplot2 is dot ggproto okay ggplots we can see that uh Is your ggplot two, ggplot two. Oops, sorry. Is your ggplot two scale underscore y underscore continuous? Okay, we can see it's true. That majority of what we have in ggplot two is a ggplot two object. So ggplot two object is another. Is another. Is another area of. Uh, object oriented programming in R because we can just see that we can call ggproto. We can say class. We can say this is a new class. You can say inherit class, just say null. So we can see that it's going to return ggproto object, class, new class, and gg. So we can just call the default ggproto. ggproto uh, null uh, so ggproto sorry 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 ggproto in every class null it also null. Yeah, so we can see that these are all GG. It's a class GG, which is the same object because we can look at the class of GG plots. Okay, we can see it's class of GG and what GG plots. It's a class of GG and GG plots. So these are all basically, these are all. Uh, ggproto objects. So they just give us a snapshot that in order for us to be, when we want to think of extending uh, our GG, ggplot2 objects, if you are thinking of extending ggplot2, you have some other method in your. Okay, so let's see the question. Okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'll pay all the days to yours. So in order for us, for you to be able to see, we want to extend ggplot2 objects, so we need to look at uh, ggproto, which is another part of object-oriented uh, programming. Maybe if you want to develop your own package, you don't want to add your own method to ggplot2 because ggplot2 is already, it's a very huge package. So you need to really dive into uh, ggproto and look at all the methods in which you can implement in your own package. So I think those are all uh, what we'll be discussing in in, uh, in the next chapter when we're talking about extending uh, ggplot2. So we'll be looking at a lot about uh, ggplot2, ggproto object in the next two uh, chapters. And that is, that is where I will stop. So I don't know if there are any questions before. I think I'm okay, thank you. Yep, I think.